The first newspaper to bear the name Stars and Stripes was printed during the American Civil War. It was produced again during World War I and has been continuously published since World War II. Today, the Stars and Stripes is distributed at U.S. military installations all over the world. We're here at the Akasaka Press Center in Tokyo, home of Stars and Stripes Pacific, which was founded in 1945 to serve U.S. troops stationed in the Pacific region. In this month's show, we're going to highlight the history and the mission of Stars and Stripes Pacific. I'm Slade Walters. Welcome to the Rising Sun. The machine behind me is the printing press used to print the daily and weekly editions of the Stars and Stripes. More than 50,000 newspapers are printed on this press every week using those rolls of paper. About 16 rolls of paper are used. That's a lot of news. Speaking of news, now we have news stories for you highlighting the activities of the U.S. Army here in Japan. Citizens and council members of the Sagamihara and Zama City communities visited Camp Zama to tour the installation and receive a briefing on the mission of U.S. Army Japan as part of a Central Readiness Force relocation tour. The tour was hosted by the South Kanto Defense Bureau. I heard the local communities of Sagamihara and Zama cities near Camp Zama realize the importance of helping and supporting each other as neighbors after the Great East Japan earthquake. From that came a great opportunity for the local communities to tour Camp Zama and learn about the mission of Camp Zama, what kind of work they do, and what kind of people work there so that both communities are able to enhance their strong relationship and friendship. That is why the South Kanto Defense Bureau planned today's tour and CRF relocation brief. During their tour of Camp Zama, attendees saw both the north and south sides of the installation, including the U.S. Army Japan headquarters and various U.S. Army Garrison Japan facilities, including the new CRF headquarters. They also received a briefing on the mission of the 4th Engineer Group from the unit commander, remarks from the U.S. Army Garrison Japan commander, and a briefing on the U.S. Army Japan mission from a unit representative. Since we are neighbors, we would like to have a great relationship with the U.S. military by understanding each other. Today's tour was a good start toward knowing more about the U.S. military. My impression of today's tour and brief of U.S. Army Japan was positive. This year, the CRF will relocate from Tokyo to Camp Zama, and I think that will also help to build good relationship between Zama City and the U.S. military. I feel this is very encouraging. We would like to act as a bridge between Zama City and the U.S. military to enhance our good relationship. Reporting from U.S. Army Garrison Japan, this is Kevin Kratzarek. A Budo Hajime, or martial arts demonstration, was held at the Sagamihara Minami Police Office, and Camp Zama community members were invited. This demonstration is an annual event held in early January. We are required to build strong physical and mental strength, so we practice judo or kendo every day. U.S. Army soldiers assigned to the 88th Military Police Detachment were invited to participate in this year's event. Showed weapon retention from a suspect from the front, as well as weapon, reten weapon retention from a suspect from the rear, as well as two-on-one takedowns and apprehension of a suspect. This, this for me was a great opportunity. I was honored to come out and, and work with Japanese police and learn different, different um, techniques that they use. And I was also happy to show them what we do. We asked the MPs to demonstrate to the local community attendees how they immobilize and apprehend a suspect. Our police officers were very interested in the military police officers' performance. I heard from among the officers that they would like to learn some of the training the military police officers conduct. This event so special is that it incorporates a lot of the behind-the-scenes training and uh, that's required uh, in order to do their jobs better. And that's one of the great insights that you get out of these kind of, of demonstrations. For U.S. Army Garrison Japan, this is Dustin Perry reporting. It is said music is the international language, connecting different cultures with no other ways to communicate.
But to the U.S. Army Japan band, that's not enough. You know, their, their face lights up when we speak Japanese. Um, I think at first they're a little bit surprised and it's kind of that, you know, you give them an inch and they take a mile. At first they're surprised and then they test your limits. And then you've gotten yourself into a hole you can't get out of because now they only want to speak Japanese. Many of the band members take Japanese classes and they see the effect on their shows. Last year it was much more difficult to interact with the children and uh, this year we're actually getting ready for our Japanese final tomorrow. So uh, when they were asking us questions like what sport do we like or uh, what's our favorite color, we would respond in Japanese and then uh, we were actually writing on the blackboard in Japanese and the kids were getting quite a kick out of it. With over 200 off-post performances a year, the band members should get plenty of practice. For U.S. Army Japan, I'm Jay Mann. Hey, Puddin! Look at that, man! A Russian artillery shell! Whoa! Clueless, don't touch it! Last time I tried to take home a souvenir like that, the first sergeant had me eating dirt. We can't just leave it. Well, Private Clueless and Puddinhead, what do we got here, some UXO? Yes, yes First Sergeant. Sergeant! And what are we gonna do about it? Recognize, Recognize report. retreat, report. That's right, and don't touch it! The purpose of Stars and Stripes, the mission of Stars and Stripes, is to provide news and information, First Amendment protected news and information to the military communities, uh, service members, DOD civilians, their families, uh, that is what we do on a daily basis, deliver news information content that's relevant to them to help them exercise their rights as citizens and help them also, on the softer side, to enjoy the time that they have overseas and take advantage of the, all, all the great things to do and see uh, in their host nations. A crucial difference between Stars and Stripes and local command information is that First Amendment. The freedom of the press pursue all aspects that are relevant to a story. The command information, uh, well, certainly those folks uh, have a message. And we are, we see ourselves as uh, on the team in that we want to tell the story of the service member, but we also have the obligation to tell the fair, balanced, and accurate story that may reach well beyond what command information wants to address. Stars and Stripes in general and Stars and Stripes specific cannot do its mission without the feedback of the audience, the community that we serve. So we look for that engagement and what I, what I encourage when I have the opportunity to get out uh, to the various locations uh, that we, uh, we, we are present in, uh, I always ask folks uh, for that feedback and whether it's uh, just talking to someone there in, at the food court uh, or it's someone posting a blog or a letter to the editor, uh, that is how we continue to evolve with our readership to meet their needs is that open, honest feedback from the field and that's really what we count on to, uh, to make those changes and adjustments as we continue to meet our mission. Printing a newspaper requires several detailed steps. The editorial department lays out the newspaper and then sends a digital copy to this computer to plate machine. This machine produces four aluminum plates, one for each color of ink used to print a color newspaper. It takes a lot of specialized knowledge to produce a newspaper today. Students at Arnell Elementary School got a chance to share their specialized knowledge in geography at this year's National Geographic Bee. Here's a story produced by Takashi Matsuda. The National Geographic Bee is actually um, for 4th through 8th graders. Um, here at Arne, um, it was 4th through 6th, and present for the finals were 5th and 6th graders. Um, we had 10 finalists and um, 2 alternates. There was a school-wide um, preliminary test. Um, it was pre-recorded and shown um, over the computer. And from there, the Geographic Bee committee, we scored them and then we took the top 10 
and then the next two for the alternates. Um, we did have about uh, three tiebreaker rounds to find the top ten and the two alternates. The Cyan Mountains are located near Lake Baikal in which Asian country? I'm um, just really happy. I didn't really think I'd make it this far, but I, I'm just really happy. It made me really nervous, but after a while, you kind of get, gain more confidence and it just really helps you out. I feel really great. It was really fun. You know, I actually really didn't. I just was like, okay, I'll do the preliminary rounds, and if I pass, then maybe I'll study. And then I passed, and they're like, oh, I really study. I had no idea that I was going to um, get this far. I kind of focused worldwide and especially in the United States because so many questions would be about that. Um, you can learn about just anywhere. You can learn about all the different cultures, all the different places, and just all sorts of cool things. For Trevor Lau, he has to take a written test next week just by himself. Um, and then we have to mail it off to Washington, D.C., and they will score it. And then they will let us know if he qualified for the next level, which is statewide, but being that we're, it's Dodiawa. And then if he uh, makes it there, then he can go on to the Nationals in Washington, D.C. Yes, it was very exciting. Um, I was just proud of both of them. Um, they did the best that they could, and it could have gone either way. I think the question, I know uh, Trevor probably was really happy when he heard that question. And I know um, it, it honestly could have gone either way and it just made it really exciting. I'm just proud of both of them. It's worth it. It's really worth it to try and um, do your best and get in the beat. It's really good. It was really fun, really a really good experience. Uh, I recommend people to try it. Local staff, the, the reporters uh, that Stars and Stripes has in Japan and Korea, uh, we mainly focus on stories that we think will reach the widest possible audience. Uh, we don't have the ability to have reporters and editors on every base in uh, uh, in the Pacific, so we try to. Uh, so it's impossible for us to cover all the local news that's happening, and we couldn't fit it all in the newspaper if we wanted to, anyways. So uh, we, what we do is we try to find. Uh, the stories that are going to reach and be important to everyone, whether they be paying benefits or, uh, you know, a any kind of housing issues, the women in combat uh, issue, which is now in the newspaper today. Uh, so we just try to find things that we think everyone's going to be interested in. Each uh, day, the news, the, a reporter comes to us with story ideas and, and we discuss them. Uh, and then he or she goes out to cover the, the story, comes back and writes it, gives it to the editors. Uh, who edit the story and this is kind of where it, it's really amazing what happens at Stars and Stripes in any newspaper every day but especially at Stars and Stripes. We have reporters and editors in seven different countries in five different time zones and so each day those editors and reporters are gathering news to send it uh, and it's all sent electronically to uh, our headquarters staff in Washington DC where a group of editors over there kind of create a jigsaw puzzle and take all those pieces, all the stories that we give them, all the stories that come from the Associated Press and the other wire services they use, and fit it all into the daily newspaper. And then, they take, once they have the newspaper all put together, they turn around and ship those files electronically back to places like Kuwait and Japan and Korea and places in Europe, and uh, hand it over to our fine circulation staff who turn around and get it to your doorstep every day. And so the fact that we do that 363 days a year, to me, is pretty amazing. I think the most important thing to us is that, that people, readers, understand that Stars and Stripes is congressionally mandated to be editorially independent. Uh, there is no command influence in, in what you read in, in our paper. Uh, we don't go into a story uh, with any preconceived notions. We don't go in looking to, a to write a story with a certain slant. Uh, to us, there is no good news or bad news stories. There are simply news stories. Uh, they may not always shine a positive light on something that the military is doing, but it's our job to sort of be a watchdog for the troops that are out there. And so when you read 
a story in Stars and Stripes, it is the most accurate, timely information that we can provide to you that we think you need to know. Inside the offices of Stars and Stripes is a 24-hour fitness facility operated by U.S. Army Garrison Japan's Morale, Welfare and Recreation. Employees here, as well as residents at the nearby Hardy Barracks Lodging, have full access to this facility. Rising Sun will be right back. Hey, Clueless, stop and buckle up, man. We're just going to the bowling alley. Five blocks, five miles, no difference. It is the law. I'm gonna do it, just stop the noise, man. Don't be clueless. Buckle up every time you drive. And that means government vehicles, too. Stars and Stripes Pacific was founded uh, in 1945. Uh, we started printing in Hawaii uh, through uh, the Star Advertiser there. Uh, we were there for a few years before we moved into Tokyo and started printing here in October of 1945. Um, we initially started printing through uh, Sahi Shimbun um, and then eventually moved into the Hardy Barracks compound in the 1950s um, and then eventually into this building, the Akasaka Press Center, uh, in the 19, early 1960s. The first issue of Pacific Stars and Stripes um, was in uh, May of 1945 um, and it focused on uh, sort of the, the wrap-up of World War II, the news that was important to folks who were stationed over here. Uh, we do keep an archive of uh, every edition we've ever published. Uh, we have in the library uh, bound copies, actually, of uh, every newspaper we've printed since 1945 here in the Pacific. Um, additionally, uh, we're working to digitize those archives. Um, so we do work with, I believe it's Heritage Foundation, um, and they are helping us to scan in the records so that they are stored digitally, uh, so they'll be available longer. Um, and that also allows us to make those archives available to our readers.大きく分けると約800に上るバンドボリュームを保存しています。こちらが最初の相関号のオリジナルのコピーです。え、こちらはクリップファイルで人名のファイルを マーティ こちらは人名をファイルしてあります。写真を保存しております。え、例えばこちらにあります。昭和天皇。こちらのファイルの中には私どものスタッフが撮ったもの、またワイヤーで送られたもの。それらのもの年代別に保存しております。Um we have um a wide range of things in the archives. We have uh, things from state visits when you know, various presidents or secretaries of state have come through to visit, um, different generals, um, and then we have a lot of entertainment, a lot of very interesting entertainment history as well. Um, this building used to have a, a club on the fourth floor, so as celebrities would come in and out of Tokyo through the helipad, um, sometimes we would get folks in here. Um, we've got uh, photos of Muhammad Ali working out before a fight. Um, we've got photos of Marilyn Monroe. Uh, we have uh, several photos from Europe of Elvis Presley when he was a GI. Uh, so we have uh, some very interesting um, snapshots of history, um, including sometimes even film productions that were going on uh, in the area. Our reporters were able to get out and uh, get some photos of those. I'm here in the interactive media room where staff members manage and optimize online content for mobile devices. 
This allows readers of Stars and Stripes to get their news on the go. An iPhone app is available now, and Android and iPad apps are expected by March 2013. The U.S. Army in Japan has a long history that dates back to Yokohama in 1945. This report, produced by Daisuke Sato, reveals some of that history.横浜港が開港して以降、横浜港ではあの近代的な港湾施設の整備が大きな課題でした。で、最初に1894年に大桟橋、これは今もある大桟橋ですけれども、それが完成しました。で、その後20世紀に入りまして、1900年代の5年から
上屋です、えー、米軍に接収されていた機関は占領期には、えー、セカンドメジャーポートの司令部米軍の司令部が置かれていましたちょうどこの写真は、えー、米軍の家族が乗った船が接岸するのを出迎えているシーンで大勢の米兵が家族が着くのを待っているところですで主に大桟橋と新興不島では米兵の上陸それから物資の陸揚げそしてやがてあの本木や根岸等々に米軍の家族住宅ができてきますと今度はその本国アメリカから船,で船に乗って来日された米兵の家族たちもこの大桟橋や新興不島から日本に上陸をしたようです。The port of Yokohama has for many years played a significant role in establishing the city as a gateway of Japan. And though the city and its people have evolved and changed over the years, the importance of the port to Yokohama and Japan has remained the same. Stars and Stripes not only prints newspapers, but also magazines and sales flyers for other U.S. military organizations throughout Japan and the Pacific region. This machine cuts, staples, and folds paper into final products like this one. Japan is rich with many interesting customs, like the brush memorial service at the Egara Tenjin Shrine, where devotees bless and retire old brushes used for writing, painting, and calligraphy. ま、1年の一番最初の25日というお祭りを行っておりまして、1年の一番最初の25日というお祭りを行っております。こちらでお祭りされています。菅原道真子は学問にも秀でていたというふうに言われているんですけれども、それと同時に書道にも才能があったという